Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo and we're here at the South Park Center and I'm here with Maria with her movie Party of Two. Let's take a look at the clip. Uh, Maria, thank you so much for being here, um, and thank you for bringing your film to new filmmakers. I, I love it for so many different reasons, um, but for those that haven't seen it, tell us a brief synopsis of your film. Yeah, so the film is about this girl, Maxine, who's a young woman who her broken relationship with her mom kind of causes her to isolate herself from her friends and everyone around her. And so it follows this one night where she meets this girl that she just instantaneously connects with. Mm -hmm. And we just spend this whole night with them together. Yeah, I, I, I can't tell you, like I was so moved by it because it just taught us as humans, maybe we don't know what people are going through in their life yeah. and certain things, even at a party situation, you don't quite know what someone's going through. And then even the way they both got introduced together, you kind of didn't know if they were going to get on with each other. Like they're like, cause you know, she was actually in her room. <laughs> yeah. And so they're all like, it was that kind of whole dynamic going on. And then that, you know, this journey and just goes to show what can happen when there's communication and when we yeah. can just have a little bit of care for each other. And I just thought, wow, if that people could watch your film and let that resonate for the rest of the world, that'd be great. Where did the inspiration come for you in making this film? Yeah, I mean, it was made in the USC thesis class. Mm -hmm. So we have like a bit of a structure to it that there's like four directors and we pick from this pool of scripts. Mm -hmm. And I was really drawn to this script because I mean, I'm always doing female stories that mm -hmm. have to do with like sexuality and identity and coming of age, maybe because that's like the three things I'm going through currently. Yeah. But I was also drawn to it because I think being a filmmaker and moving to LA and having the privilege to go to film school and want to be a filmmaker, mm -hmm. you have to use your voice for yes. something important. And I just physically cannot make things that don't have some sort of social impact. So mm -hmm. I think the script scared some people because it has difficult things to talk about, but that mm -hmm. always makes me want to tell that story because if I'm gonna make a difference in just one person's life or just make someone feel less alone for one night, like that makes it all so much, it makes it all worth it. Oh, you need to make a film every day because honestly <laughs> you're gonna just save the world with your films. And that, that's such a wonderful thing, what, what a wonderful way to wanna have your career is just to, just to basically help lives through, through the move and image, which is so powerful. Um, I fell in love with these two characters just for the fact they just both gave something to each other, you know, it was it was really great, the dance was great. How was the casting process for you? Yeah, so I mean, my actors were amazing, mm -hmm. and USC was definitely encouraging us to get a casting director on, which was something I was really unfamiliar with, but we brought one on and she helped me meet Maxine, and then Sahil, who plays Stella, I found her through, my friend made a short with her, and everyone was reading the part of Stella in just a very manic pixie dream girl type character and she read it like she actually believed everything she was saying. Mm. And so meeting them, it was really interesting because I think it's really important to also just know the actors as people because mm -hmm. even though they're becoming these characters, it's always gonna be them as well. Mm -hmm. And so I think going through that whole process of getting to know these two people and opening up with them about what I'm going through and knowing mm -hmm. what they're going through made it just an incredible process to mm. create this thing together. And it, it, they really did, their dynamic was just was just wonderful, it really was. Um, for you as a director, obviously when you're, you know, essentially going through this subject, this is very difficult, you know, someone that doesn't feel comfortable in their lives, how do you go about directing that? Is it, do you have, is it rehearsal? Is it something you talk about before? Or is it something you do kind of on set? Because I mean, it's obviously some high stakes in here of someone who doesn't want to continue their life anymore. 
Yeah, I mean, I think we definitely went through heavy rehearsals and that makes us all feel really comfortable with mm -hmm. each other. But I think it's also a combination of creating this safe space on mm -hmm. set. I think a lot of the times when I first moved to LA and I would be on set, I wouldn't have that feeling of community and mm -hmm. it didn't feel like this open space for everyone to discuss how they're feeling. And so I think beyond wanting to make a film that helps others, I also want in the process of making it that people feel like they can open up with each other. Mm -hmm. um, and I think growing up too, there just wasn't this language to discuss mental health at all. And I think that stigma has started to chip away, but there's still so much more to go. And we just wanted to be a part of that conversation. And mm -hmm. I think making this is just trying to chip it away. Cause mm -hmm. I think it's something that people can now talk about and discuss openly, but there's still just so much more left to do. Oh, there, there really is. But I think the one thing that, you know, I felt watching it and, and, and hopefully most of the audience felt like watching it is that there's also a lot we can do ourselves to support mm -hmm. each other and one another. Cause we don't really know what people are going through the, in, in our everyday lives. But just by being a voice to someone to listen to is, is a great thing. And I think your film resonates, hopefully, with everybody that, you know, there are people that are going through that and maybe you can be a support of someone. Um, was that something you kind of was hoping the audience might get from that as well? Yeah, I think like going into it too, and I talked about this last night, but I think like a big challenge, at least for me, was that like I'm still navigating myself how to talk openly about just my own like mm -hmm. depression and mental health. Mm -hmm. And so I think making this film, that was a big struggle of like, how am I supposed to make this story that is supposed to make people overcome their depression when that's still something I'm figuring mm -hmm, out. Mm -hmm. But I think the process of doing that and just being open with that fact and mm -hmm. letting these people in my crew know about that and knowing what they're going through too was just a really beautiful process. Mm. And even I was saying that last night, like somebody walked up to me afterwards and they were like, I'm going through a really rough time and like seeing this made me feel better. I mean, like that's, oh my goodness. that's the whole point of it. Just that's like, like the most amazing thing yeah. someone could say, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. Wow. I think what I love about, you know, as a filmmaker and as, as, as a person as well is that, you know, sometimes people can just think we've got everything figured out like we were just you know like we're just some kind of superhero and we're just you know in the day we've all got our own things and I think it's so great when you can be open and we as humans can be open or more open in, in our approach and just saying hey you know we're just trying to get through and I feel like the creative art sometimes saves that and it, that must be wonderful that this person came up to you because that's just that's every reason why you wanted to do something like this and that's great credit to you. Well, I was going to say, what was your experience like last night at New Filmmakers LA? Did you have a good time? Yeah, I had an amazing time. I mean, like, even for the first screening, just seeing literally it was all women mm -hmm. on the stage Isn't talking great? about their films is just incredible. And it's mm -hmm. this community where everybody is sharing their art, but everyone is appreciating it and everyone was clapping at the end of them. and everyone was there for the right reasons mm -hmm. and wanted to support one another, which mm -hmm. is really beautiful. And I think as filmmakers, but also as audiences, like you just have this desire to feel heard and seen and mm -hmm. understood through film. And I think that's starting to change and like the diversity that we see in film and female directors that yeah. like, we need all these stories to be heard so that mm -hmm. young girls growing up, they see themselves on screen and they see their story where a lot of the shorts that we watched last night, those wouldn't be accessible like when I was growing right. up. Right, how things so, are, thankfully, bit by bit, we got a lot of work to do, obviously, to yeah. make those changes, but um, I, lo I love that. Uh, what is next for you, Maria? Um, I mean, so I've been doing a bunch of shorts since I was like nine years mm -hmm. old, just mm -hmm. terrible ones at that point, but it's always been shorts, and so now I'm kind of trying to navigate into going into longer format oh, so I'm writing a feature Excellent. and I don't know when I'm going to be making it but hopefully soon I mean I'm in that whole process of writing it and it is a it's like this culmination of just the past 21 years of my life in a script so I'm really excited to well be we need it. your movies you know <laughs> you are too. essentially uh making us all better more understanding humans so you know and and 
we thank you for that. So, no, thank you, Party of Two. I can't wait to see much more of your work. And in your in in your work so far and your approach so far, what what piece of advice have you been given, or would you like to give anyone out there that would like to follow in your footsteps? Um, I think a combination of I went through this whole point when I first moved to LA where I had this just like open eyes of I want to direct and then people were like oh okay like so does everyone else and I think that's a combination of like gender and age that mm -hmm. you feel discouraged from mm -hmm. these things that you want to do and then I went through this shift where I realized I needed to believe that mm -hmm. I could be a director and that I am a director mm -hmm. it's not like a want or an aspiration it is what I'm doing and I think just calling myself that made it very different for yeah. me. And I think also in terms of just creating my films, just not shying away from anything. I feel like you need to pour every bit of yeah. yourself in your projects because mm -hmm. that's when you do that and you don't shy away and worry that somebody's going to think you're weird or that like you have strange mm -hmm. thoughts. I think that's when you really make a difference yeah. when you're just completely honest yeah. in like every word and piece of art that you make. Well, thank you for inspiring <laughs> us. I mean, honestly, you are a fantastic director. Um, we can't wait for your next film. I can't wait. Um, and, and thank you for inspiring us with this project and just as, you know, to, to be better people. Because um, honestly, it's, it's amazing what the power of the image, moving image can do. And uh, you've certainly done that for us. So thank you very much. Thank you. Party of two more, everybody. <laughs> Fantastic.